Hey y'all, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how to make your very own dice cage. And what this is, is it's not only a pendant or a keychain or however you decide to wear it, but it is also a pair of playable, rollable, or pair, it's a, it's a dice. <laughs> um, however the words work about it. Um, and so you can play with it and then you can put it back into its cage and I'm going to show you how to do that right away because I have sold these out of my booth for a few years now so some of y'all might have ended up with just pieces like this and you don't really know what to do with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to put it over our fingertip just like that. And so you can kind of fiddle with it but just get it to where it'll sit like a thimble over your fingertip. And do you see how these two rings are different colors? Uh, in some of the designs that I've done, they're the same color, but they are a slightly different size. This one here is smaller than that one there, and this one here is larger than that one there. So find the two that are kind of hanging down, and keep an eye on them. But we're going to take our finger and take our dice, and just press it, and then push it right over. And so see how it kind of just wraps itself right around? And then, where did I set it? We're going to take our clasp, little lobster claw clasp, open it, and hook through the two differently colored rings. So that's how that works. Now the tools and materials that are going to be used here are listed down in the video description below, but I also have them written out here. We're going to need six of 18 gauge 3 8 inch, to, um, and that's the inner diameter, that's um, standard wire gauge is the 16 gauge and inner diameter for all of the rings. So six of the 16 3 8 two of the slightly different colored if you choose to do that, 16 gauge 5 16 four of the 18 gauge 3 16 nine of these very smallest that we'll be using, and those are the 18 gauge 1 8 inch, and then just one of the 16 gauge 1 4 inch, and just one lobster claw clasp. And so let me get these moved off to the side so I don't spill it again. <laughs> and then I tried to draw, oh yeah, and then also pliers of whatever your choice. Um, here I have some flat nose that are graduated, so they've got some wide flat nose and some petite flat nose, and then some bent nose pliers, but you can use whatever you like. And then a marble, a dice, a stone, a whatever. Um, whatever you would like. Like this is a great way to hold on to some of the different tumbled stones that you can get like in little assorted packs at like amusement parks or if you find some gravel that you like or something like. <laughs> so I tried to make a diagram. So that's, I'm not a professional diagram maker, but <laughs> uh, I like color coding would have gone miles, I think. These six here are our largest rings. And they're going to be joined at each point with one of our smallest rings. So let's go ahead and start doing that. And the way that we're going to do this is if you coil and cut your own or if you purchase your own, you're going to end up with some rings that look very much like this. You can see where they're offset from where they were stacked together on the coil. And you're going to want to close it before you start weaving with them. And everybody weaves a little bit differently. Um, with this design, you could have, here I'm doing all the large ones closed and all the small ones opened. You could just as easily do all the large ones open and all the small ones closed. It's, it's not necessarily how you get there, it's the end result. So feel free to experiment, deviate from what I'm teaching here, and um, find your best way to get to where you're going. Excuse me. It is the highest pollen count day of the day to, or of the of the month so far today. So much pollen I can't even think straight. So you can almost swim in it. <laughs> Excuse me. And so I'm just going to continue closing these. And whenever you open a ring, you would take it from its position like that and just bring it open like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And so now you can see how these are laid on the table. I'm going to do a connection point between these two. 
these two here, these two here, and those two there. And so it's going to end up using nine of these rings, these wee bitty little rings. And so I'm going to start by having one of the small open and hooking two of the large closed onto it. And closing it, just like that. And then we can set it right back down on the table so that we can see where we need to join together next. And then I'm going to hook one onto the end, and then another one on. There we go. And now I'm going to hook these two together. And again, you can do this just however you like. Set them back down on the table. So yeah, you can see this one's not open yet, so I'm just going to take it and boop, nice and open. And I'm going to hook these two together. Which right now looks just like it's a big line, but what we can do is bring this around just like that. And so now we see we need to do a join from this one to that one. Well, kind of on a diagonal. And in chainmail terms, this is, I believe, known as an oriental weave. But that's not really important. Um, a, a lot of folks get hung up on the what the weaves are called and what the origins of the names are and different things like that. And really, I feel like it's more important that you're familiar with the technique um, and with how to do it, because then it doesn't matter what you call it, because you can still make it. And you can still recognize it even whenever it's under another name. So there we go. And now we're going to bring in our last one. It looks like I got myself that one too many rings, but there we go. Bringing that together. And you don't necessarily have to sit it back down onto the table every time, but uh, whenever you're first starting out, it can really help you with visualizing and knowing what goes where. So there we are. We have our nice little triangle made out of chainmail. And so from here, I'm going to close two of these rings, and these are anodized aluminum. That's what's giving them their color. There we go. And I'm just going to set one kind of off to each side, just right there and right there. Now what's different about this, and you can kind of see in the diagram, is I'm only going to be attaching at this point and at this point. I'm not going to be attaching this ring to this ring. And that's going to allow us a little bit of space whenever we're wrapping it, um, that it just hugs around the dice nicely without making it too crowded. And so I'm going to hook onto this ring and put that one onto there and then close. Then I'm going to take another open one. I'm going to hook through that smaller anodized ring and then hook through the one right next to it. But you can see there's no connection now between those two and that's going to allow us to expand further out that way than what we normally would have. And so, and you could add this next one onto this side or onto this side. Doesn't really matter. Just whichever you prefer. And I'm going to close that. Pick up another ring. And I'm going to set this back down so that you can see. I'm just going to bring it. So the same one that has this ring through it, I'm just going to hook and then hook and then close. And now, technically, that part is done. Again, you can slide it over your finger, much like a thimble. But, I mean, it really does just look like a jumbled mess of rings. So, the last step now is we're going to open up our 16 gauge 1 4th inch ring, or whatever size ring you decide to use. And I'm just using that to go through the little hole, if it will fit, <laughs> of our bale. And this one won't fit through, so I'm going to try a different clasp. 
because I have my clasps on hand but not more ring sizes. Yeah, that one slid through just perfect. So, excellent. Toss that one back into the bin. And then we close it. And this loop here is going to give us something that we could thread a necklace chain or cord or, you know, whatever through. And I only have the one dice on me currently, so I'm going to pop it out of its case. Then we can take this, put it on our finger, press it, and just wrap it on around. And it can take a little bit of fiddling with the rings to get everything to rest up against each other the way that you want them to. Then we open up our lobster claw and hook through one of the smaller, differently colored rings, and then through the second. And it can be a little snug, but that's okay. You want it to be snug, because that way you don't have to worry about your dice popping out on you. There we go. And there are a lot of different variations that you could do this with different ring sizes and different, you know, just the concepts the same however way you go about it. Um, so again, I highly encourage y'all, um, if you don't have these exact ring sizes, experiment around a bit with what you do have and see what you can get to work. It's also really fun if you make this with stretchy rubber rings for the large rings also. So that's pretty fun. But if y'all have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I do love hearing from you guys. Um, and then all of the links to my social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram are the ones I predominantly use, are down in the links as well, as is the link to my Patreon page. If you enjoy my daily free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in my fairy house giveaways, my, you know, craft crates, um, we actually, we do four different giveaways, one each week of the month now, so, um, that's something pretty fun, but pledges start at just a dollar and they do so much to keep these videos coming and keeping the lights on and all that good stuff, so thanks guys again for hanging out with me, and until next time, happy crafting and I'll see you around. Mwah. Bye! <laughs>